In today's video, we have some trade rumors around the Montreal Canadiens and defenseman Ethan Bear in Carolina is getting interest from a variety of teams, including a couple other Canadian teams. We have several more PTOs, another NHL player has announced his retirement, and lots of other news from around the league. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we do have a variety of news to talk about today. Lots to cover here, so let's dive right in and get started. Uh, first up, just moments ago, we got an announcement. NHL player Curtis Gabriel, who's announcing his retirement. Now, of course, Gabriel's only 29 years old, didn't play a ton of NHL hockey, was more of a minor leaguer, but in the last few years, it seems like every season, he at least got into uh, you know a handful of games at the NHL level, played for uh, you know San Jose, got uh, signed in Toronto, went over to Chicago. I think he only played 51 NHL games, was a, a bit of a scrapper, got a lot of penalty minutes, but certainly made the best of it. Like, as he was saying in his announcement when he was uh, you know, announcing his retirement at 17 years old, he wasn't even sure he was going to be able to or want to push to play pro hockey. So the fact he made it as far and as long as he did was certainly quite the accomplishment. So Curtis Gabriel, certainly uh, young enough, still has plenty of time to do plenty of other things. And we certainly wish him the best in retirement. Now, another player that we don't want to say he's retiring because it's not confirmed, but it's not looking promising that he's going to play this year. And there are many concerned about his playing future and some thinking that his career could be over. And that's Nolan Patrick now in the Vegas Golden Knights. Of course, we don't know the exact extent of the latest injuries, uh, except it was an upper body injury. And I assume it could be head related. Um, the, the team never really gave a lot of details on it. But Elliot Friedman was reporting in today's podcast that uh, it's he's hearing that he's not expected to play this season. He said it's a little bit early to say that he's going to retire, but that there are certainly some people that he's talked to that are concerned over whether or not he will be able to come back. And that retirement, unfortunately, might be uh, something he's facing. He does have a contract for the coming year, so it doesn't make any sense to really explore that right now. He kind of has a salary to collect, so he can do that, try to recover, and kind of analyze his future after that but right now it's not looking good for young nolan patrick to be able to salvage his nhl career now as i mentioned several more ptos announced here today a couple more from the philadelphia flyers they're bringing in antoine roussel and artem anisimov I, i'm not really sure either have enough in them to, to make the team anisimov i'm yeah, be really shocked if he made it um but roussel another guy who can be a fourth liner uh you know certainly a physical player dropped the gloves but they did sign nick delorier to a pretty lucrative contract to play that role i don't know if they want another guy in the organization to do the same sort of thing or not we'll see but they have a couple of players there like i said before you gotta remember too some of these ptos they some people like some teams they have different kind of methods here to their madness so to speak right sometimes they bring in a player with the intent to hope to want to sign him if he does well and sometimes it's really just to push the other players to create more of an internal competition you don't want players to be taking things for granted take things lightly and just kind of push some of them to work a little bit harder and in the case of a guy like Roussel, say what you want about him he is our very hard worker and it could be something just to kind of amp things up in camp just to make things interesting that way. So we'll see if either can get a contract. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers finally do come to terms on a PTO with Jake for 10. It's been rumored for quite some time, but the last rumors we were hearing was that it might not be happening. Uh, Vertanen was also getting interest from the Flames and Sharks reportedly, um, but he is officially now on a, a contract for PTO with Edmonton. I know there's a lot of people that are not pleased about this. I know he went through with some pretty serious allegations. He was found innocent in court. I've seen the arguments that just because he was found innocent doesn't mean that he was totally innocent, but really at the same time, like we can't say he's guilty either when he wasn't found guilty. Right. Um, at the same time, I understand the Oilers have brought in some people that might be decent hockey players, but certainly have questionable character so far. At least the Vander Kane experiment has worked out. We'll see where Jake Vertanen goes. I don't know. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure he... Do you take the whole legal issue out of the question here? Just Let's forget about that just for a moment. And you just look strictly at his play. He played in the KHL last year in his last stretch with Vancouver. Does he deserve another chance based on that? You could argue that no, he doesn't. Uh, it doesn't matter what you think of the other stuff off the ice. But there's been some other guys that have seemed... They, these high picks... 
they seem to get multiple and multiple opportunities before it's finally over with. So we'll see what happens there in Edmonton. And the Calgary Flames probably have the best chance of getting a player out of the PTOs today. Uh, the headliner is Sonny Milano going to Calgary. Uh, we've heard for some time that they had interest, but there were other teams in the mix. Uh, the, the thing that's been dogging Milano for some time is the consistency. He's a talented kid. Uh, played well last year in big stretches with the Anaheim Ducks paired with Trevor Zegras. But then he also had big stretches where he wasn't producing much. So uh, that's kind of been the story throughout his career. To have real good stretches and then not so good stretches. And which Milano are we going to get in camp? That's what you know the Flames and the the team need to see. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but I wouldn't be shocked if he plays well. He could be a, a cheaper contract. That could be one of those low risk, high reward type of contracts. For Calgary, a depth piece can't hurt. Uh, this team certainly, like I said, trying to do everything they can to be in a position to contend this year. And uh, we'll see how they make out. Some other news from around the league. Sabres forward J.J. Paterka, who was a recent draft pick, drafted the same year as fellow German player Tim Stutzler a couple years back now, has uh, changed agencies. He's now going to be represented by Alan Walsh of Octagon. So we'll see um, if there's any impact there. I know Paterka's got a... Uh, obviously going to be needing his next contract soon, but that's still a little ways off. But a change in agency there for the youngster. Uh, the Ottawa Senators have also announced today their leadership group for the upcoming season. Uh, we already knew who the captain was, Brady Kachuk, of course. Um, we expected Thomas Shabbat to once again be an alternate captain. He has been for a few years. Uh, and the third alternate was the questionable uh, place where it was going to end up, and no real big surprise here. It goes to longtime veteran and former Flyers captain Claude Giroux, who certainly comes over to Ottawa, bringing a wealth of experience. Uh, and like I said before, I know I've talked to people about this uh, either on the channel and off the channel, asking uh, my thoughts on Giroux if he'd get a, a letter or not. It's like you know what, Claude Giroux. To be honest, I don't know that he really needs a letter on his jersey. He's he's so used to being a leader and uh, whatnot, and his, his experience that he's he knows he's not. He's in a different spot now, so I don't think he has to have that to, to be a leader, but certainly it, it kind of takes the pressure off. I think a lot of the other young guys who eventually will get that letter um, to be, uh, you know, that they don't have to worry about that right now, just focus on hockey. That takes the, you know, the, the media pressure off them a little bit as well. Not a big deal that way, but, uh, but Drew will get the third A. Uh, along with Shabbat and Kachuk to be officially part of the Sens leadership group. We also got confirmation today in the Islanders, uh, Lou Lamarillo, that Corey Schneider will once again be part of the organization, will play in the American Hockey League. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of contract he's going to get. It could very well be uh, an AHL-only deal. Um, like I said, I haven't seen confirmation that he's been signed to a two-way NHL contract or anything like that. Um, so he may or may not be eligible to be called up, but will still be in the organization and still playing for uh, Bridgeport. Now, uh, on to a few other news and notes here. One being Bo Horvat in Vancouver. Now, of course, uh, you know, we're not going to necessarily call this trade speculation, but right now, uh, Elliot Freeman's reporting that the contract extension uh, discussions going on between the Canucks and Horvat are not even close. So, certainly, they just went through this with JT Miller. Um, you know, they obviously had a lot of runway ahead of time to kind of get things sorted out and figured out they did that before the season started of course he still has this year on his deal so it's not like it's really any kind of a pressure situation it's not like they're running out of time but it's just, it would be nice for all parties involved to have that extension in place before the season starts a lot of players don't like to talk during the season uh, they find it distracting want to focus just on their game i don't know if horvat's going to be in that predicament or not but certainly based on what friedman's saying he says sounds like the offer in Vancouver would be closer to six whereas he feels that Horvat's likely going to get seven plus but at the same time they haven't been negotiating I don't think for too too long here um so you know not surprising that Rutherford and Alvin are starting on the low end of it I guess but uh it's certainly a bit of a concern I don't think there's any reason in Vancouver for fans to uh think he's going to get traded or to think that uh uh, you know, it's time to hit the panic button or anything of that nature. But Captain Bo Horvat certainly deserves, uh, you know, a long -term, longer term deal at a, a decent raise. And will certainly be earning that deal. But it's it's a far away from being, uh, you know, reconciled here as of right now. But we'll see. To me, if the season goes along here for Vancouver and goes well, it's probably going to become less of a topic, a little bit less of a distraction. But if there are struggles, either personally for Horvat or the team, uh, then it certainly could become 
more of a hot topic throughout the year is because that's the reason why a lot of these players in the enter the final year of their contract they get become the biggest stories is because the, the future around them that's why a lot of the rumors come from is well teams don't have much time to trade them if they're going to get any kind of assets in return it's all about asset management this is a business after all and uh, horvat at the end of the day if no contracts reach and the, the situation is not good in vancouver at the deadline Maybe, I guess you can't really help but think that it's possible, I guess. But we're not trending in that direction right now. But uh, another player to watch is Ethan Bear in Carolina. Uh, we know that uh, things didn't really go the greatest for Bear last year in Carolina. There was some speculation that he might prefer a trade. But there is now reports from uh, various NHL insiders and reporters saying that uh, he is kind of quietly being shopped and that there are some teams with interest. For example, the Vancouver Canucks, we know, want to bring in another defenseman, uh, especially somebody who can play on their right side. I know there's talk that maybe they try to get one of their lefties, maybe even Quinn Hughes to play their offside this year. I don't know what they're going to do in that regard, but they certainly would like somebody on that right side, and he certainly fits the bill. He could be a good candidate, not making a ton of money, uh, but certainly somebody who's, uh, you know, at this point, I kind of wonder sometimes if Edmonton regrets moving him. A uh, really good partner for Darnell Nurse, and obviously, you know, they decided to move on there. Uh, but another team to watch is Ottawa. We know that they've been hard after uh, Jacob Chikrin. The price remains really high, as we've talked about here in recent days. The interest is still there, but with a guy like Barry, he's not exactly the same kind of player as Chikrin, but they want to secure and shore up that right side as well. They're in the same kind of predicament as the Canucks here, that they really want a top four right-hand defenseman, and he kind of fits that bill. They could easily kind of shift gears here, and they have a ton of prospects and picks that they could offer to Carolina to make that an interesting trade. Um, so obviously we'll have to see where that goes. Um, not to say that the Canucks couldn't make an intriguing deal, but I do think Ottawa might have an advantage that way, uh, given how deep their system is right now. But uh, certainly those are two teams, not to say that there wouldn't be others as well, but it wouldn't be shocking to see Ethan Bear get moved uh, before the season starts. But, of course, no guarantees. We'll see how Carolina, they tend to be quite uh, willing to take their time and get things right here. And uh, we'll see if Waddell can hook up with either Ottawa or Vancouver or another team to move the defenseman and get him some um, a better opportunity, I guess you could say. In Montreal now, of course, uh, more reports from Montreal Hockey now indicating that Ken Hughes has not stopped working really hard to try to make some moves ahead of the season, and it's still quite possible as training camps begin getting ready to open here that uh, we do see something in the very near future. Apparently, uh, there's still no big surprise here. They really want help on the blue line as well. I'm not sure that Ethan Bear really fits what the Canadians are looking for, but you never know. They could jump into that conversation as well. I mean, they might want somebody a little younger than Bear. Not that he's old, but I think they're kind of looking at somebody you know, to, to kind of fit their rebuild. But at the same time, maybe they want a little bit more experience to balance things out. So there could be interest there too. Uh, hard to say. But no matter what, they're looking for D is the main thing they're looking for. And they're looking to move out at least one, if not two forwards. Mike Hoffman and Yuel Armia continue to be the top names being talked about. Uh, Dvorak's out there too, but a lot less likely given his play and contract. I think the other two have a, a greater chance of being traded. But the reports from the uh, article here from Montreal Hockey Now indicate that as much as they're having conversations trying to get a D in return for those players, one name that keeps being brought up in trade conversations by the other teams is Jake Allen. Now, of course, we know that Montreal and Allen have reportedly started the, uh, the I guess, the negotiation process on an extension. He's in the final year of his deal as well. And uh, all indications point to the fact that Carey Price isn't going to play this year. Likely a good chance, at least, that his career might be over. And I think they're content to have Jake and another guy, whether it be Montembeau or Primo, kind of lead this team for the next couple of seasons. So an extension makes sense. For Jake, and I don't think they have any intent on trading him, just like we've heard about guys like Josh Anderson, for example. I don't think the team really wants to move him, but when teams are asking all the time and making offers, eventually an offer might come on their table that they just can't refuse. So we'll have to watch that scenario uh, as they go through negotiations. You never know if things come to together quickly, then perhaps uh, you know he gets signed and those talks uh, kind of go away. But if they don't, and the the, the uh, process negotiations kind of drag on a bit, and they keep having those conversations, team keep asking, yeah, you never know. Maybe they pull the trigger. I think it's less likely we see that. But when teams are asking that much, it just shows you that they might say, oh, geez, you know, this many teams are asking. Obviously, he's valued out there. 
maybe we need to take advantage of this from a just from, you know from an asset management perspective and get the kind of return that we may not be able to get in a year or two. So at the same time, they're only going to ask themselves, well, if he's not there to play the games, then who will? So we'll have to wait and see on that. But Montreal, I do expect to be busy in the coming days as camp opens, as we get through the first bit of camp and teams start to see what they have. I suspect we're going to see them do their best to make an acquisition here while shedding a few players at the same time. So let me know your thoughts on all of today's news and rumors down in the comments. We'll talk about it further. If you're new to this channel, of course, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, 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 oh,